Hello folks, Jason Christman, JC's Bees, your Central Ohio beekeeper. It's that time of year folks, where it's very hard on the bees. The temperatures have been going up and down at this point, and now we're entering into a two week deep freeze. We got highs in the mid 20s, sitting at 21 degrees right now with some snow coming down, and lows in the teens overnight. Just yesterday we had a 43 degree day. And on those warmer days, beekeepers like to pop their hive cover and take a peek in on their girls and see how they're doing. And sad but true, um, a lot of people find their bees dead. And why is that? They feel they've done everything right all the way through the beekeeping season. Here's the problem. Winter is a lot more different than bee season, say spring and summer. The bees have to rely on the food that they have stored within the hive to eat on over winter plus the supplements that we provide. Now, if we don't provide any and they run out of stored food, then they're definitely gonna die. Um, some other things that are against you, Varroa mites, that is top of the list, probably even above food stores, because I've seen many colonies um, die during the winter, but still have plenty of food stores left. So you gotta ask yourself, did I really do my best at managing the mite level in my bee colonies? And could that be the reason my bees could be dead? Um, believe it or not, folks, I think there's a lot of luck and overwintering bees. You can do every single thing right, and the weather worked against the bees, and now they're dead. It may be that you had a warm day, the bees started moving around, and then all of a sudden you had a sudden temperature drop. The bees weren't able to get back to an area inside the hive where there is food stored so they could stay right there and ball up around it and eat. They're stuck over in a place where there is no food and they can't move. So that obviously equals death. But varroa mites, they infect our bees with different diseases. Kind of got to think of varroa mites like the ticks that we get out in the woods or out in the fields. Um, those ticks can make us very sick if we do not get them off of us and they start sucking blood. Well, the varroa mites, they're blood suckers too, and uh, they work just like the ticks. They infect the bees, the bees get sick, they get weak, and could you imagine being weak already and being out in 21 degree weather or down in the teen digits overnight? Would not be easy. So what you gotta do if you lost your colony Pull yourself back up um, and realize you've got a lot of resources to start out this spring. Um, a fellow emailed me or sent me a message yesterday um, saying his bees died, he did everything right, they've got plenty of food, but he don't understand why they died. Well, like I said, it has a lot to do with luck, but you have to do your part. You have to manage the mites, you've got to make sure that they got plenty of food, and that requires a lot of supplement feeding in the fall. Um, you've also got to do your best to keep moisture from building up inside the colony, whether that be with quilting boxes, um, the mountain camp uh, sugar method. Um, there's several different ways. So make sure you're doing your part, and if you lost your bees, pick your head back up. You've got a lot of resources to start out this year. Your bees this year, um, will do better than the bees you had last year just because they've already got resources. They've got drawn comb, they've got food, and hey, you've got a leg up on this now. You know a little bit more than you did when you started, say last year. So um, keep your head held high and keep trucking forward. And I do think it's important to kind of try and eliminate down to what you think um, may have killed your bees. So if you've got plenty of food left in your hive and your bees are dead, and let me make a note here. Don't decide that your bees are dead when it's cold. Wait for a 50 degree day and then make the decision because bees in torpor, um, which is a hibernation, a stage of hibernation, they do look lifeless. So don't make that decision on a cold day. Don't go dumping bees, just wait for a warmer day. But then try and eliminate down to the reason that you think your bees may have died. That way you can correct that the following year. If your bees look wet, then you had a moisture problem. If your bees had plenty of food and you're finding them, the cluster dead right in where the food is and the bees look dry, 
then I would have to fall back on, did you treat for mites properly? Did you do it all year? Did you do it in the fall soon enough that they had time to raise healthy bees to overwinter on? So there's a lot of questions you have to ask yourself, but you're not really gonna get a true answer unless you go sending uh, some bees to the lab to get tested. And even that may not completely answer your questions. Now, during these cold spells, um, the bees don't get to get out and go potty. They wait for warmer days. Now, if it's a dire straits thing, then they might shoot out real quick and try and make it back in. But some will get cold and not make it back in. So when they have to hold this um, feces for weeks on end, that's when you can start having gut problems with your bees. Um, nozema, a big gut problem for bees. So if you see when we get warmer weather that your bees are coming out and they're leaving brown spots as soon as they leave the hive, you probably got some bees with some gut issues, um, AKA no nozema. Um, there is treatments out there. One of my favorite is Nozavet Plus and it works very well. I now feed that in the fall so that my bees can overwinter and get that um, medication to prevent nozema. So keep that in your uh, back pocket maybe for next year to uh, when you do your fall feeding to add some Nozavet Plus. And I think you can get that on eBay. It's, it's been kind of hard to narrow that down and it is a little pricey, I'm gonna warn you, but when you figure out how much you've got invested in your bees. So that's some points I wanted to raise about overwintering bees if you found your bees dead. Um, hopefully that isn't the case for most of you, but there is still going to be some of us that lose our bees. Um, you know, I've got 28 colonies right here in this bee yard, and I won't be surprised if a percentage of them don't live, even though I've treated them all the same and done everything to what I feel is right. It's just how it works. Um, life isn't fair. <laughs> so that's my, that's my opinion on that, and I hope it's helpful to some of you. So what I'd like to do now is share some insight on how the Broodminder is working for me. If you've been following my videos for very long, you know that recently I got the Subhub for the Broodminder sensors. And the Subhub is right here in my Easy Mite checker. And the reason it's in there is because the unit itself is not waterproof or water resistant. So I've got it in this to keep it out of the weather. But what this does and each of my colonies out here, I've got sensors, and this is the tail end of one of them right here. It runs back in the colony, and it monitor monitors the temperature inside the colony. Well, that information is sent from there to the subhub, and it's like that from every single colony out here. So I can gather the information from the subhub um, with my Bluetooth device, and it's actually close enough that I can get the information inside the house without coming out. So what I wanna do now is kind of give you a rough overview of some of the measurements I'm seeing with the sensors. And this colony here, it actually has the Broodminder Bluetooth Hive Scale. So we'll be able to kind of measure the weights on this and see what it's done since I've set this up. And we'll be able to see where the temperatures lie and a few of the sensors I have show humidity. So we'll be able to see some of that information and I wanna share with you what that looks like on the My Broodminder app. So let's go check that out now. It'll be a lot warmer in the house too. Okay folks, I've now moved inside where it's a lot warmer and we're gonna log into mybroodminder.com and I'm gonna show you how the readings look from the Broodminder sensors. So let's go ahead and get started here. First thing we're going to do is we're going to come down to JC's Nuke Yard. We're going to click on that and that's going to open up this window where it shows green boxes. These green boxes each represent a different bee colony with the exception of the top two. Those are experimental sensors I have sitting here in my office. But the rest of them, um, those are all hives. Now we can change the view by clicking here and going to Hive. And now you can see it shows a graph versus showing the actual readings of each sensor. So let's go back to the graph. Let's go down to hive number 803. That's the one I just showed you has the hive scale under it. Now you're going to notice at the bottom of each box is an index, which shows 
what each of the readings mean. If we hover over the green line or temperature, um, you can see that that brings it to the front and we're able to see it very well. So let's take temperature for example. It's labeled above the lower brood box. Now that's just a note to let me know where the sensor is in the lower brood box. Hive number 803 is a five frame nuke that's only one single box. But the note lets me know that hey, your sensor is above the box. In other words, it's on top of the frames. It's not sitting on the bottom board, it's at the top of the box. So now if we move up into the box, you can see that indicators pop up showing the readings of the graph. And it changes as you work your way across. What I want to do is I want to go into this colony and I want to show you how Broodminder is able to tell me my bees are still alive. So let's go into 803. <coughs> Excuse me. And we'll start off here at the top. The very first graph shows the weight of the colony and it's only showing it for the last seven days. Now I have the option to click and go back a long, long ways, but I've only had these installed since October, so it's not going to go back a full 90 days just yet. Now, this lower line here on the high scale, that represents just the high scale being in the bee yard with nothing sitting on top of it. When you see this sudden increase, that's when I place the nuke on the high scale. Now, I want to make a note here that the high scale has a temperature sensor in it that picks up the outside temperatures. Broodminder uses a default setting to gather the outside information. And I don't know for sure, but I'm going to assume that it comes from the state capital, Columbus, Ohio. And that's 50 plus miles away. So I don't know that I, I feel that that's 100% accurate. And I'll show you here that. I'll show you that here in a second. But you can see how the, the weight has fluctuated. Um, if you come here, our highest weight was 38 pounds. So if we scroll down through here, you're going to see it goes to 39 pounds on January 4th. Now, no, that doesn't mean the bees were out gathering nectar. That either means there was snow on top of the colony, maybe a little ice, or just maybe the fondant patty inside of the colony is collecting moisture. But this sudden decrease tells me that it's not moisture. Um, so therefore, I have to think that's either snow or ice on the colony. You can see it bouncing back and forth, up and down, all the way across here. Now, the last time I synced the device, we were at 35 pounds. So I guess I feel that they're still sitting pretty well on food stores for this time in the year. Okay, so now let me show you. Let's clean this up a little bit. Let's go back to 14 days. That'll make it a lot easier to read this graph. And I want to show you how you can tell if your bees are still alive with the Broodminder devices. First, let's look at the index. It shows this maroon or pink line as the sensor above the lower brood box. So that's my temperature inside the colony. The hive scale, in this case, since we're under temperature, is showing the outside readings of temperature. The light pink is Broodminder's default outside temperature reading. So if you look at the scale and the outside temperature, you can see that they're pretty darn close to each other riding across here. But you're gonna notice that like this corner here, they don't exactly line up. Um, 41 and the, brood, or the hive scale has 43. So that's why I like to have an outdoor sem sensor in the bee yard to give me the actual temperature in my bee yard, not a general idea of the state's reading. So you can see that it's quite the roller coaster up and down, up and down. Look at this big spike. We hit 45 degrees outside that day. So now let's take a look at the bees or the temperature inside of the colony, which is represented by this top line or this darker pink or maroon line. However, whatever color you want to call it. So, let's take this cold morning right here. On this morning, the scale had that we were sitting at 10.73 degrees Fahrenheit. If we shoot straight up above that, inside the colony it was, 
hard to get the mouse to stop right where you want it. It was 40 degrees. Now there's no way it's not possible for it to be 40 degrees inside the colony when it's only Ten, almost eleven degrees outside. So that tells me there's something in there creating heat, and my bees must be alive. So basically, as long as your temperature reading and the sensor inside of your colony are not laying over top of each other, you see this space between these lines? As long as you've got that space, it tells you there's something in there creating heat, and your bees must be doing fine. Now let's go here. This was uh, this morning. So this morning we woke up and we had two degrees outside. Inside the colony, we're sitting at 31.75 degrees. Bees are doing wonderful. So that's how you would tell your bees are still alive during the winter with using the Broodminder device. Now we can come on down. This particular uh, sensor in this colony actually measures the humidity too. Um, so the outside humidity is the lighter pink line. That's what Broodminder is using. This line here that's waving all over the place, up and down, up and down. And then the darker pink or maroon line, um, the one that goes up and stays above this gray for the most part, this gray band running across here, um, that is the sensor inside of the colony. Now, I don't know much about where humidity should be during the winter. Um, being able to... Um, have some readings this year and compare next year will give me a leg up on that. But to me, it seems like it's kind of high. Um, we take the outside temperature here, or humidity, on the 14th, we had 95% humidity. We come down to what the colony had inside, 80% humidity. Now, we all know that humidity creates moisture inside the colony. So that is a major concern. Um, to have 80% humidity. Let's see where it is here on this peak. 86%. So this is something that um, I definitely want to monitor and keep an eye on and learn more about. Where the humidity should lie in the hives and when is it a concern when it gets too high? What percentage is that? Um, we can scroll down here a little bit further and this is my battery readings outside in the devices. So you're able to see where your battery is lying as far as the juice that it still has. And, you know, on a six degree morning and we've still got 52% of the battery left on the high scale. And let's see, 70% on the sensor inside the colony. So that's just a quick overview on how the Broodminder can be helpful. It can uh, teach you a lot about your bees and what's going on inside of the colony without disturbing them. And you're actually able to go and see that your bees are still alive. So I hope this has been helpful. If you have any questions about the Broodminder or anything I spoke about in this video, please leave a comment below. 